What's up, everybody? Chester and Pete Church Devotional Podcast. Welcome back. Thanks for being with us. We'll get started in just a second. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We hope you had a great weekend. We're joining back together here. Romans chapter 9. We left off at the end of verse 5 on Friday. We'll pick it back up today. Romans chapter 9, beginning in verse 6. This is what the Apostle Paul writes here in verse 6 of chapter 9. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. And not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise who are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year I shall return and Sarah shall have a son. And only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by the one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I have raised you up that I might show my power in you and that my my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills and he hardens whomever he wills. Now, this is an interesting section. And to really understand it, you've got to understand the Old Testament context. We're not going to go into details about the book of Genesis and how God brought a promise through Abraham to his people Israel. But you just need to understand that as we get started with verse 6, as we picked it up at the end of verse 5, the Apostle Paul is talking about how God's sovereign choice of those whom he chooses to be his is God's prerogative to offer salvation to those whom to whom he would offer salvation. And that there were Israelites whose eyes were intentionally blinded so the gospel could go to the Gentiles. Jesus came to his own, his own knew him not, but to those who did receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. That's what John tells us in John chapter 1. Now, we pick this story up in verse 6, or this argument up in verse 6, and he says, well then, does that mean if all of Israel, the Old Testament chosen people of God, did not come to faith as God had promised, then does that mean that God's word has failed. And he says, absolutely not. Because the issue is not an issue of descent from a human standpoint or from uh, that which is uh, inherited from their parents or an issue of lineage. The question with reference to Abraham had to do with Abraham's belief in God's promise. And so through Isaac, which is the one that God had specifically given to Abraham and Sarah, God has chosen to bless the world. And through that offspring and those who would come after him, God would bless the world. Of course, ultimately, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But not everybody who descends from the line of Abraham, who everyone who bears the sign of outward circumcision as a Jew, everyone who comes and born into a home that is a Jewish home and a Jewish heritage is a true believer. Only those who trust in the Lord, only those who give their faith in the Lord Jesus or in the promise of God from the Old Testament and receive their Messiah. And so faith was still the requirement of entering into the eternal covenant of God. Circumcision from the outside entering into the earthly covenant and they'd circumcise their children, etc. But even those who bore the mark of circumcision may be considered in this world as Jews, but if they rejected God, they rejected the promise of God, they were unfaithful to him, then they were not part of his family. They were not his children. And so what Paul is saying here is that just because the that the Gentiles are brought into the covenant relationship with God through faith. And just because that not all Jews believe in Jesus Christ as Messiah does not mean that God's word is null and void. In fact, it actually proves the opposite. It proves that God's word is true and that it is based upon faith and that those who trust in him will walk with him. And this is by God's own design and God can choose to give mercy to whom he can wishes to give mercy So the ultimate question is, why didn't those Jews know Jesus? Why do other people who perhaps grow up in the Christian church today not come to place their faith in Jesus, though they've had every opportunity to do so? 
And the answer is because God chooses to bring those whom he wishes into relationship with him. It is God's sovereign prerogative, God's sovereign choice. And so he chooses that. And he uses the illustration of Jacob and Esau. And he says, before they had done anything good or bad, so you can't argue that this has anything to do with how good Esau was or how bad Jacob was or how, etc. This has everything to do with God's sovereign choice. That before they were even born, while Rebekah was still pregnant, God said, the younger shall rule over the older, or the older shall serve the younger, because God had chosen that it was going to be that way. And that is God's desire. The challenge for us in these moments is to trust God to be good, right, and true. And to say, you know what, it is your prerogative to do what you wish. Though we don't fully understand, though we may not think it's fair, though we not quite fully comprehend what's going on here, we have to trust that you have the sovereign right and prerogative to give mercy to whom you will give mercy, to be kind to whom you will be kind, to call the ones that you would call to be yours. We have to trust him to be the sovereign God of glory. That's the essence of Psalms. I mean, excuse me, that's the essence of Romans 9, 10, and 11. Will we trust God to be the God of the universe in order and, and trust him so much to allow him to be God and to do what he wishes with his own prerogative, even if we don't fully understand it? I pray that you will do that. I pray that you will trust the Lord and recognize there's great hope in the fact that if you are a follower of Jesus today, it is as a result of the fact that God chose to give you grace. God chose to give you mercy. And that is a wonderful benefit and an eternal gift of God's grace, which you receive through faith. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.